Welcome and um, I'm back with another little video with a, a super little project um, which is a perpetual calendar. So the calendar stands up um, and it uses the months as the sort of easel block if you like but the main part of the calendar has a movable band which can move to whichever month it is. So for January obviously that started on a Monday so I can sit it there and I know that's January. And the months themselves are just fixed with, ooh, it's come off, I'll stick it back again, um, are just fixed with Velcro dots. So obviously stick them on properly. When you, <laughs> I just put this together to show you. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd make it. I got the idea, I first saw it made by, um, I really must stick that on straight, but we'll do that later. Um, saw it made by Jessica Lewis, um, a demo I think is from... Um, USA, I think, um, quite a while ago. But anyway, let us have a look at the pieces we need. So for the main calendar base, um, I'm using Lemon Lime Twist because I just haven't used it yet and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. Um, it doesn't matter. It obviously depends on your paper and uh, what you want to do to decorate it. You can do this in any colour, any cardstock, whatever you really want. So the base is eight by six. That is 20 and a half in, uh, centimetres by 15.5 centimetres. And I've scored it in half at 10.25 centimetres or four inches and 15.5 centimetres or six inches. So eight by six scored at four and six, 20 and a half, 15 and a half centimetres scored at 10.25 and 15.5 and centimetres. So that is the base. Then you need, for the main part of the calendar, you need the top piece. And this is six by four or 15 and a half centimetres by 10.3 centimetres. You need two pieces of DSP. They can be whatever they uh, you want. I've used Zany Zoo because I'm using the characters to decorate it. Um, but these can be any pieces of uh, DSP. And these are five and three quarters by three and three quarters or 14 and a half centimetres by 9.8 centimetres. And you need two of those. Then for the window frame, uh, you actually need a three and three quarter inch uh, by three inch piece. That's 9.8 centimetres by 7.5. And the belly band piece, which is six and a half by one uh, inches or 17 centimetres by three centimetres. And finally, you need, um, well, next to finally, we need one more bit, but um, for the actual numbers, that's to actually stamp the numbers on, um, that is a six by two inch strip or 15 and a half centimetres by five centimetres. So those are the bits you need. The only other bits you need are um, little tiny months um, strips for the months um, and I've cut these I cut a strip of these the strip was um, 15.6 inches centimeters I can't remember what that was in. sorry let me just work that out six what did I say 15.6 centimeters so 15.6 so it's about six inches yeah six inches um, yeah six inches cut into half inch strips or 15.6 centimetres by four centimetres, cut into strips of 1.3 centimetres. So you need 12. So that strip will give you the 12 um, pieces for the months. All right, let us go on and make this, this actual calendar. So this is folds in, as an easel card. So my bone folder, and I'm just going to fold that first. So they're both mountain folds, going to fold them both inwards as mountain folds. And that forms our easel base. Okay, so that's really simple. Then I'll stick the bits of DSP on. So we're going to stick one across the base there and one onto the main piece. So I'll just stick those. Now you could colour these. These are the flowers, obviously, or you can have a patterned piece or whatever. But I decided I just wanted the plain black and white flowers on this. So again, totally up to you, your choice of whatever DSP you want. There's some gorgeous DSPs in the new mini catalogue. They are really beautiful. I'm going to be showing them on my live later. Oh, that'll tell you when I've actually recorded this video because the day I record it isn't the day it actually gets published. <laughs> but that's okay. Anyway, um, 
whatever DSP I wanted to use up my Zany Zoo DSP. I've uh, got various other projects I want to use it for. I just love that set. I love cute animals. That's one of the things I absolutely adore is cute animals. So, right, so these are this bit. Obviously, we don't stick this on here. That's the last thing we do. But those bits are all prepared. So I'll just put those to one side for now, somewhere out of the way. So let me talk about the frame. Now, it's a good idea to make yourself a little frame template. So that is my frame piece. Um, and we're going to cut out a window. So I've actually cut out and already prepared uh, and written on it so I know what it is, um, a window template bit. And the window template is uh, two and three quarter inches by one and five eighths inches or seven centimetres by 4.2 centimetres. You can work that out for yourself because you can actually work it out. If we use the stamp, the stamp set I'm using, which I ought to have shown you at the start, where have I put it? Here we go. Days to remember. So you've got the big, we're using this big long stamp of all of these. You can make individual months from this, which I've done before. If you look back in my previous um, videos and things for last year, but your window template needs to cover all the numbers because it needs to move along. So we need to be able to see all of the numbers both top and bottom. So you can work out how big it needs to be, but the size is what I've just given you. Um, so seven by 4.2 in terms of centimetres. Right, well, while I've got this out, we might as well do the stamping actually, because we have our strip ready prepared for the stamping. Now I'm doing mine on my um, Stamparatus, if you still have one of these. Sadly, they are retired, I think. Um, but I've already marked on my sheet at the bottom, I've marked where my card needs to go for the stamp I put on. So it makes it very easy. So I can put that in there, put that down, and I'm going to use, I've lost one of my magnets. I don't know where it's gone. So annoying because I won't be able to buy any more. <laughs> but a little tip if you do have a Stamparatus, it's always a good idea to put um, something underneath and actually a stamp case works really well to support this while you're actually inking the, um, the numbers or the stamp that you've got on it. So a stamp set is a very, very good block or just put, I don't know, various lengths of card or something else under there, whatever you have. And then we can ink that up, come across, press down and hopefully that's done it all in one. But obviously, if some of those numbers aren't good enough, then I can re-ink it and reuse it on here. So always a good idea to have a Stamparatus. So there's my number sheet already. I'll just put that away and let's get on with our window template. So this is my frame. We need enough room across the top in order to fit on our months and our days. So we want the frame to go around the bottom. So it needs to be around a centimetre in both way on, on the sort of three sides. So I can use my template now to place it down, make sure I've got enough room on both sides there, and then get a pencil. And then I can just make little pencil marks around the edge of that. There. So I've got where my frame needs to be and then I can use my trimmer to actually cut it out. Just put that ink pad away before I completely get ink over everything, which would not be the first time. So what I can then do is, I, because I've got my lines on here, I can now line it up. Might have to just stand, so I hope my head doesn't get in the way too much. I think it can be above where, above where the actual camera is. But I can make sure that I can see the lines in here and then I can line up the edge with the edge of where my first mark is. Bring it down to my second mark. Repeat that for the other line. And obviously I can use my trimmer to make sure my lines are straight, which is always a good thing as well. So again, coming up and then down to my other mark and then do the sides in exactly the same way. So make sure it's lined up. And turn and do the other side. Get it lined up. It's lined up. And that hopefully, if it doesn't quite come out, I can use my snips just to 
get the edges. I try and be very careful because I don't want to go over the edges. Um, so I'm just going right up to them. So I can just clip out where it hasn't quite gone through with my scissors. then because I'm a bit fussy any remaining pencil marks I can just use my rubber to rub out there we go so there's my frame so it is worth having a template to use especially if you want to make more than one of these because I can keep this with my notes for this particular project and use it of course every year which would be great so to finish off the frame, we need to put the days on. Now, the days you have an options. You can either use Monday to Sunday or Sunday through to Saturday. Uh, it depends on which you prefer. I personally prefer the um, Sunday to Saturday. That to me is a week. So I've already put that stamp on my block and I'm going to emboss it because I think it just looks adds a little something to my calendar. So get my embossing buddy first. Can't emboss without an embossing buddy. So we're just going to cover the card, make sure there's no grease marks or anything like that on it. And then I can get my Versamark stamp. Now you can use whatever colour you want. I did silver on the first one. I think I'll probably do gold on this. And you want to cut the frame first because you want to line up your days with your frame. So cut your frame first and then you can put your um, bits on top here. So I think I'll use gold. And I hope that I won't get it all over the desk. Let's see how we do. There we go. And then we have the magic, the magic of embossing. So just make sure the heat gun is fully heated first before I put it to my card, because I don't want it to bend the card too much. There's not so much structural stability in the card, obviously. Now it's got a hole put in it. Move the gun around. And the magic happens. There we are. Hopefully you can see as I move this. Trying to bend it so I can actually show you the magic happening, which I just love to see. There we go. So there are my gold letters, just beautifully embossed. I, I'll never ever tire of the magic of embossing. <laughs> and then just to test, we can make sure this is the right size. Oh, look at it, it's hasn't that fantastic. Good. So the next stage is to fix the number sheet to here. Now, obviously we don't want to stick it in the middle because this is going to be too big then. So I want this to be, a and I, I just use these to, to just gauge roughly where I want it to be. So I think I want it to be here. So it's about a couple of centimetres up, something like that. So I'll stick that on. Make sure I put a fair amount of Tombow on because I do want this to stick well, obviously. So as I say, about two centimetres up, something like that. And the key is I want to make sure it's exactly level. Now it's cut to exactly the same width as this card so we can make sure that it is nice and straight by using the edges to line up. So there is our base prepared. Now the next thing to think about is putting the belly band around the base. So for that, again, I'm going to use my template on top because I need this to come round far enough to touch my to be able to stick to the back of my template. I can't get my finger under it, there we go. I'm going to use the lines on my chart here to make sure it's nice and straight. So that looks about right, yes, perfect. So I can fold that round the bottom and then fold the top bit down from the top. Now you want to make sure, oops, there. You want to um, make sure it's nice and straight, but don't sort of fold it too tight. And the reason for that is that if we fold it too tight, it won't move. Okay, we want this to slide. So just be, don't go mad with folding it across there. And then if that is going to be a little, that might be a little bit too far down on here. 
I might just take a little sliver off that just because I could have I could have had it a little bit higher at the bottom actually but I'm going to take a sliver off there there we go you can actually use this as a good guide to where these need to be so I am actually going to use some tear and tape on these because I really want this to stick well Then to stick this on, we just want to place it so we know it's over the numbers. And I tend to use, you can get this number and the one in the same frame. So if I move this to between those things, then I can use the numbers on there to line up. So that's where I want the bottom and the top. So I want to make sure this is really straight. Okay, so it's worth taking a bit of time with that to make sure it's nice and straight. And then check it does move along. That's, yeah, that's just about right, good. You don't want it to slip, but you also want to be able to move it. There we go, lovely. So the next stage is to prepare all of these 12 strips. Now, I have <laughs> done most of them already because it takes a while to do this and I didn't want to bore you. I've used Pebble Path because it matches my um, matches the DSP. You can use, again, whatever colour you want. So I just need to finish by doing, I think it's January, I haven't done yet. So the number, the months from here fit beautifully on these pieces. So I found it was easier to cut them first and then stamp the months on. It's up to you. You could try stamping the months, then cutting them. But I think to get them even, it's worth doing it yourself. So there's my final one, January. Now I've done an extra step. This wasn't something Jessica did, but I found this was really a useful thing to do. And that is that I've cut myself some strips of um, laminating, um, the laminating sheets, you know, the, the sheets that you wrap things around. And I've cut them so that there's plenty of room for all of the months. And then I just lay them all out like this, down the sheet. They don't have to be level because we're going to cut them out. It doesn't even matter which way up they are, I'm not bothered. <laughs> so I just lay them all out and it, one fits in this. This was about, I think it was half of an A5 sheet or something that I found was just about right for all these months. So I can lay them out like this then fold that over and run it through the laminator. So once they've run through the laminator, I just simply cut them out. So hopefully you can see they've got this laminated top, which really does just fit them, just fit on really well. Okay, so now it's a matter of putting this together. So the first thing is to stick this on here. Do not go mad and stick it across here because then the belly band won't move. So we just want to stick it at each side. So again, I'm just going to use some tear and tape I can use a thicker one uh, here. So just some tear and tape along the edges of this piece, just at either side. Do not put it in the middle, because otherwise your belly band can't move and your calendar won't work and you'll be crying and I don't want people to cry. So a little bit of tear and tape or two bits of the narrow one. And then we can take that off. and place our prepared bit across. So I can line it up with the bottom, make sure it is level. And stick it down. And there is our easel calendar, which obviously won't stick up at the moment because I haven't got my months on. But there is the basic calendar. So this can still move without a problem. So I have made that quite a tight belly band, but that's okay, it is still going to move, yeah. So there we have that. Then it's just a matter of sticking the months on. And I've actually used, I have these Velcro dots. So I've used these. Now you need a, a male and a female, if you like, to stick them all together. So I have two sorts here. 
Now I experimented and one of the reasons I've had the trouble with the old one is that I think I got the dots the wrong way round. And I've discovered that the best way round to have these is to use the fluffier one on the back of the months. So if I take January here, just to show you, I can I use my um, pokey tool. So I can just put the little fluffy one on the top of there, on the middle of the back of my month. And then I can stick its matching mate, stick it on top. And you can do that with each of the months. So if I do that for February as well to show you, I won't do them all because it's a bit boring watching me do this, but you'll get the idea. So fluffy bit on first, then one of these bits. And then when you've done all that with all 12 months, you can actually stick them onto here. So my, I, my tip with this is start right at the very edge. So I just line mine right at the very edge and then they will just fit in. So lay them right up against each other, even slightly overlapping with the bits of uh, paper that's on. There we go. So we have all of those up and then all we need to do for that is use one of the mail bits, the bottom bits. All right, so we'll get another one done here, March. Now, but on top, we've got an extra mail bit trying to come in and join the fun over there. I get these Velcro dots just from Amazon or somewhere I think I got them from. So I can stick them all on. So I can get all my, all of these will fit in. So just work them all along right to December. And that provides you with the base, obviously, for the calendar. So it holds it up. And then whichever month it is, we can peel it off here on there. But there we go, January, stick it on here. And there we have the first month ready. And January started, as we said, on a Monday. So we can move that along there. And then that's correct for January. So to finish it off, just to add a little bit of interest to it, I've already cut out a couple of the characters from Zany Zoo from the paper. And I'm just going to have stick them either side. Remembering, of course, I only need to put a little bit of glue down the side that's going to stick there. Don't put it over the whole thing. Because we don't want to stick it to the background. That would be awful. So I'm going to have my goat baking on this side. And is it a llama? I think it's a, oh, I don't know. What is it? An alpaca? <laughs> really not sure. Okay. There. So then I can, once these are properly stuck, I'm being careful now, we can obviously use that to move them along. I can finish putting my months on. And there we have the perpetual calendar. So I hope you like that little project. Hope you have a go at it. Obviously I can use these for several years because they'll, we just have to keep swapping whatever the dates are for. So next year, I think it'll be a Tuesday, won't it? The 1st of January. So next year, that will be my January and so on. So I hope you enjoyed the project. I hope you have a go at this. They are good fun. And um, yeah, they'll last for quite a long time. I have to say I made one several years ago and it lasted about two or three years. Um, these do wear out. I don't think these are brilliant Velcro docks, the one I've got. I'm sure you can find some better ones on Amazon, but um, they will do. They do the job and that's all that really matters. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you want the measurements and things, they are all written in my blog at craftycarolscards.co.uk. And please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thanks for joining me today. Bye for now.